What is happening, y'all? Fighting Cowboy here, and welcome on back to our coverage of Elden Ring. So in this episode, we are going to be working our way through a couple more areas of Caleb. First being right over here, which is going to be Fort Gale. And that's going to allow us to teleport right on over here to the entrance for Castle Redmayne. So let's mount on up and head right on over. Uh, if you follow along the smoldering wall here, there's actually going to be a grace right before the fort. Uh, there's also a shiny beetle out here that's invisible that has the Flame of the Red Mane's Ash of War. Um, this used to be, you can, you can see his little footsteps there, it used to be one of the strongest Ashes of War in the game. It had insane poise damage, uh, so basically what would happen is like you'd, you'd hit a boss with it twice and they would fall over for criticals and you could do it over and over again. That has been patched, so... If you want to get Flame of the Red Mains, it's still here, and it still does some decent, fast AoE damage. Like, if you're playing with a heavier, slower weapon and want something to take out groups of weaker enemies in front of you, it's an excellent choice for that. Uh, but just don't expect it to be knocking down bosses and one-shotting them how it used to. Just want to make sure people are aware of that. So we're just going to run past these enemies here. I'm just going to go straight on up. Uh, there is one enemy that will kill, and you can see him right there with the bow. Now, the main reason for that is that even after we make it inside, this enemy can still hit us with those arrows. The, the arrow rain is it's quite deadly. But I'll approach him. Oh, he's going to fall down. I'm trying to do the arrow rain still, isn't it? Where are you at? Where'd you go? There we go. I mean, if you want to kill everything here, you certainly can. Uh, there's nothing stopping you. These enemies aren't going to be particularly hard. Uh, I just wanted to get rid of the one that I knew was going to be a nuisance to us. But what we really want is right inside of this fort. So you can see that we can't enter from there. What we have to do is ride around. And I think I want to dismount for this next part with the tree. I mean, you don't have to, but... Might be a little hard. I'm gonna climb on up. And once we get up here, there's one enemy we're gonna kill. And we're gonna go ahead and open a gate. So, up right here. Here, grab the warming stone. him. There's some more enemies over here. You can fight them now if you want or later. We're going to come up here, uh, but there is a much harder enemy that we need to contend with first. And what you're going to want to do is swing and break that. Be careful. You don't want to go off. And we can jump across, and then we can run on over here and hit the lever. Now, the reason we want to do this is there is a respawn here, so if you die, you'll be right out front of the fort. Uh, but because of that, it's worth getting that gate open so that we can just walk right on in if we do die. This keeps things nice and simple for us. And here we have the guitar. I'm going to go ahead and pop our flask. And you see we have the, uh, the symbol, so if you want to go ahead and call our buddy Caden. You certainly can. He'll make this a little bit easier, but this isn't a particularly dangerous fight. And you're actually going to be fighting two of these in just a little bit, especially with a, a strength weapon. We can do a lot of damage to this thing very fast and stagger it, but uh, they're, they're quite vicious. I mean, you've, you have one of these lines in Stormdale Castle, so this isn't the first time you encounter one of these. See how our rolling pokes are consistently staggering it. And by taking that out, we get one of my favorite Ashes of War, Lion's Claw. Now we're going to be putting that on for sure. It is a devastating Ash of War uh, alongside a, a colossal weapon like the Zweihander or the Greatsword. Uh, and that's going to be one of our go to's alongside a new weapon that we're going to be getting very soon. the gap. Go ahead and grab 
that. Being the festival of war indeed. Got a chest right here we'll open up. Star Scourge Heirloom just gives you five to strength. If you have a... Uh, for, for me, honestly, I'm not even using guard counters, so that's a decent choice to put on. I guess I could put on the, the Arsenal Charm, but I don't really... I'm not at a... not suffering from weight. Though with that, I could potentially go to the Greatsword, but... I've already put so many upgrades into the, uh, the Zweihander, and I've been saving up on these guys. Just with a Smithing Stone 5, we're gonna be, uh... Looking pretty good shortly with the new weapon that we're gonna get. So from here, we're gonna travel to a new location. This is going to warp us all the way across the map. So we can see we are right here. Uh, but first, we're actually gonna run backwards. There's a grace that we wanna get over to, just so that if we do die, we're at least not being teleported very, very far. Oh, man. Sniper accuracy from the, uh, the catapults. Usually they're not that accurate. Usually you can just kind of run along the bridge and you'll avoid them, but... Go ahead and grab this. Uh, and real fast, well, I am going to put on that new Ash of War. There's another one that is just around the corner that I am going to grab. Uh, if if you're the type of player that you don't really like being flashy, you'd rather just you know some people they just want to rely on the weapon. That's it. You know, I just I'm I'm fine with my attacks. I don't need to worry about anything besides my regular attacks. Anything that just makes those attacks stronger is perfect for me. If that's the case, uh, this next Ash of War that we're about to grab may be more up your alley. So the way Crag Blade works is it just plunges your blade into the ground. Uh, it coats it in a layer of rock. It's going to, to allow it to just do more damage. I believe it also does more poise damage as well. Um, but if you're the type of person that's just, you, know, you want to rely on just the basics of your weapon, it's a solid choice. So just to show that as well. Going over here. So you manipulate the skill gravity, bury the armament, pulling rocks from the earth, reinforce it, increases attack power, and makes it easier to break enemy stance. So you end up with just a heavy hitting poise monster of a weapon um but so here we are this is the i guess it technically is the legacy dungeon for caleb but it's it's short uh and you can actually incidentally miss it uh temporarily however so briefly to talk about this this is castle redmain now castle redmain eventually leads to a battle with radon this is known as the festival if you have already gone up into these upper regions, up in uh, Alts Plateau, for example, you may have already triggered this quest. Now, if that is the case, you're going to have to just push forward and fight Radon. We will have coverage of him in this series as well. And after you have fought Radon, you'll then be able to talk to Jaren, who we will introduce you to uh, either this episode or in the following part of this series. And he will then reset the castle back. So. If you come over here and there's there's you know no catapults attacking the bridge and the castle looks completely empty, just know that you probably just happen to trigger the festival and after you kill Radon, you can return it to its normal state. But if you hadn't triggered the festival, we need to fight our way on in. So if that's the case, let's run on down the bridge. Uh, now with these catapults, you can usually see where they're going and, <laughs> and not do what I did, which is run your horse uh, directly into the path of them. Usually it's it's pretty easy to avoid them when you're um, not doing that. But so we're going to run right on up past most of these enemies. I'm going to go ahead and top my, my health off. Oh my god, I'm just having the absolute worst luck. Hop right over this. And then there is a troll that'll jump on down, but we're not worried about him either. We are just hopping on down here. Uh, so if you want, you can kill these enemies here, and there's a, a couple loots that you can grab. Alternatively, just make your way over here. And what we're doing is we're just we're getting on 
uh, into the castle red main you know there's there's really there's no point on us fighting through the battlements if we can run past them I guess you could go for the fun of it Now this gap right here, I would actually suggest you use Torrent. Uh, it's quite a long gap, last thing you want to do is fall down. We have a shiny ball, this has another Ash of War that I'm very fond of. I know I've been saying that a lot, but like, Aelid is just, it's, it's packed in them. Uh, but Flaming Strike, very, very good Ash of War, cannot recommend it enough. Uh, it's very fast, so... But, I mean, Lion's Call is just, whew, look at that, look at the intensity of that. This whoop. Big damage. Let me go ahead and cure that poison, hopefully. Um, no, we're not. Well, it's okay. It's not gonna kill me. I'll manage. Um, but yeah, so flaming strike, you do a very quick um throw of fire. You throw just a streak of fire out, out past you, and then um it's a shortcut for later. Looks really good the stairs for now. Uh, you'll throw out a kind of fan of flame, and then after doing that, you'll swing through it with your sword, igniting your weapon. So you get the damage from the flame, the damage from the swing, and then afterwards, your weapon is then ignited in flame, and so it's dealing bonus damage. So, very solid choice if you're looking for something that's on the faster side of things. I'm gonna run right on in. We'll kill this enemy. We'll kill this enemy. this enemy. <laughs> oh man, how I love strength. Uh, one of the really nice things about our our new ability is it will stagger almost anything. You can see right there we were able to pancake him. Uh, and that's one of the things I just I really like about Lion's Claw. Like, you know, using Stomp. Stomp is okay, and we used it a little bit, but Lion's Claw is on a completely different level. Uh, so, this next part... Kill him. And we're gonna run right on in here. There's a couple enemies, ignore them for now. I'm gonna get over here and open that shortcut up. And that's the shortcut that I was previously talking about. cookbook. Go ahead and heal up some more. And we have a other page. Take him down. Um, now, there are two of those lions here. Uh, before you go ahead and fight them, though, what I'm going to actually suggest you do is you get the grace. Because... Those lions are pretty dangerous. Two of them are even more dangerous. We're gonna run over here to grab this cookbook first, because that's quite important. And then we're actually going to run past the lions. Now with a little bit of luck, they actually won't even see you while you're doing this. Uh, and we are gonna come back and kill them in just a little bit. But for now, you wanna run for this, this rampart here, the blockade. I'm just gonna run past these enemies. We're going to round the corner. Going to not get torched by that flamethrower. I'm gonna wait a moment for him to finish. And we're gonna go right here and we're gonna get this grace. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna fight those lines. But if we happen to die, now we're already inside the castle. It's going to make things significantly easier for us. And we're not gonna have to do the whole uh, the approach again where we're running and jumping around, so.
Now, I do think it's worth trying to lure them separate. Uh, you can fight them separately, so... Let's see, I hit that one with the throwing dagger and it's coming on over, and the other one hasn't even made a move yet. Lion's Claw just opened it right up for the crit. I'm going to try and crouch up on it. Oh. Already sees us. Can we get the heavy off? jump is probably the biggest thing you need to look out for. As long as you can avoid that, you should do just fine with those. Um, if you want the beetle that keeps making that noise, it's just a health beetle. It's right around this corner over here. Let's figure somebody's going to be like, where's the beetle? I can hear it. Hear the beetle. Uh, there's some loot up in here if you want. You can just run up in there. Okay, so we are back on over here where the grace was. Instead, we're going to go over this way. Take us on over to a pumpkin head that's waiting for us. Revenge for the boss at the start if it gave you trouble. You get the Flamberge. Pretty decent greatsword. Also has some bleed built into it. So if you're running a strength build but you'd like to have access to bleed, not a bad option. You go up here for some more loot. And that'll get us a smithing stone 5. And then we're going to warp right back to the chamber outside the plaza that we grabbed earlier. Now, from here, we're going to exit again. Also, run behind all these guys one more time. Some goodies up here we can grab real fast. Actually, one of those times where flaming strike would be devastating. Which uh, I might actually show off uh, all of those ashes of war at the end of this episode because we're probably going to have a little bit of time. Uh, now that we're going to be going to get a wet blade, there is a abductor over here. So if you can position yourself right here. But it's stuck on the tree, and then after it's stuck on the tree, just run on in. You don't have to get it stuck on the tree, but it certainly can run right up on you and hit you through the door and stuff. So the tree is just a, a nice, safe way to make the approach. Um, that red hot wet blade, that allows us to do uh, fire as well as uh, flame art. So we'll talk about those in just a moment. And the rest of this area is actually pretty, pretty clean cut. Uh, very, very small in comparison to the, uh, you know, when you think about the size of Stormville Castle, or alternatively, the, uh, you know, the Royal Academy. I mean, this is a, I don't know, I, th I believe this is considered to be a legacy dungeon, but it flows very different from the aforementioned ones. It's just, you know, it's, it's very much its own little standalone thing. Uh, and it's, it's short. It's very short. 
you know what you're doing, you're clearing it in you know, 20 minutes of like that. Smithing stone six. Uh, and that's all that's up here. <laughs> that's coming up. Killing those guys and getting the smithing stone. So, back to the chamber outside the plaza. Uh, the the boss that we have up next, I, I'd rather do some, some actual coverage of it as it is a, a tricky boss to conquer. So, instead, we're going to talk about some of the Ashes of War we just picked up. So, as I mentioned already, Lion's Claw, very fast, very high uh, knockdown potential. It can pancake a lot of enemies. So, if you want something that's just quick, high damage, you really can't go wrong with that one. Uh, Cragblade, which I mentioned, is also a very strong choice if you want to just focus on the potential of your weapon. The big thing here is going to be the additional poise damage on this. So it's not going to do anything flashy, but the knockdowns, where how I'm a big fan of doing the charged heavy knockdowns, Cragblade is just going to amplify the potential of that even more. Very, very strong choice in that regard. Uh, for, for getting the job done. Uh, now, as for some of the other ones, I don't believe I can do... can't do Flaming Strike on you. Uh, but I can, however, do Flaming Strike on the Brick Hammer. So just to show that off real fast. So with Flaming Strike, we do a Wave of Fire, and then you follow it up with your right trigger. So Flame, and that very fast swing is then going to Enchant. So... Uh, for example, right now we are at a 414 attack power. As you can see there in the top right there, attack power 414. Swing. After that, we are now at a 504 attack power. So an extra 90, which is huge. That's that's like a 25% increase almost in terms of how much damage we're doing. Um, and as you can see, you, there's, a, there's a nice sweep on that as well, which I think is, is one of the most valuable things about this. You know, taking this... A similar encounter to what we just had, where we were surrounded by enemies. Gather them all up again and, and show the potency of it. Let's see, the, the AoE potential is certainly there, and it's, it is devastatingly fast, so... If you're not a fan of the flip of the Cragblade, I, I wholehearted recommendation of Flaming Strike as a go-to Ash of War of choice. Uh, but either way, up next we have a another boss on deck, and then after that we have another one of the Demigod bosses with Radon. So either way, we have a double boss feature that's going to be heading your way. Uh, at this point, I would go ahead and level on up. I'm focusing strength, of course, but regardless, make sure to stay tuned and we'll catch you soon as we continue.